Thank you very much, uh, Mir, for that introduction, which uh, clarifies things and puts the, um, how would I say, the landscape of what, what we, we can talk about. We each have five minutes, which is very short. Uh, my training, um, I'm, I'm attached to the uh, Université Catholique de Lille, uh, so Lille in, Lille in, in France, uh, to the Department of Ethics and, and Technology. Uh, I'm by training, I'm an anthropologist, a sociologist, and a psychoanalyst, but more relevant to what we're talking about now. Uh, I was at some point a researcher in artificial intelligence working for British Telecom and, um, and for 18 years I was uh, working on pioneering systems uh, within the financial industry, uh, what was the uh, beginning of uh, high frequency trading and automated systems of uh, uh, loan allocation. Um, because you, you mentioned a lot of details, I'll, I'll just try to remain in the more, I would I say, more general considerations, maybe. Um, our difficulty now, and uh, you've hinted at it, is that um, we uh, human beings are dealing now in many environments with something which is more intelligent than, than we are which is a notion which is difficult for uh, to, to make the public understand because the public essentially sees um, anything which is digital as being produced by a human being in one form or other. And with this idea that, that there's a mastery that remains there somewhere in the background, that uh, there's no way that um, a, a, a piece of software would not would do something which the, um, the programmer has not decided to do. And that's to become totally wrong, it's, uh, especially as a view, especially with artificial intelligence. There are some mechanisms there in the background, things which we call the non-linear effects, uh, things of that time. The, 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 the scale of the database is things that we can't not master. Uh, we see artificial intelligence playing games and being able to split its, um, its army in, in five bits in, instantly, uh, which no general even among the best can, can do. Um, we have to, we have the, the main problem we have is trusting, actually trusting what, what we see. And we have a tendency to, um, because we see people being biased, we have a tendency to think that if the computer doesn't do, or the artificial intelligence doesn't do what I expect it to do, uh, that it probably it is like a human being because it is biased. It may not be the case. It may just be because it knows a lot more than we do. It is just also, and we have to get used to that idea because it is more intelligent um, than we are. Um, there's that image used in, uh, when I, in, in the, um, milieu of uh, artificial intelligence, a chimpanzee in its cage and there are two human beings there discussing and what they're discussing is shall we move the chimp from one cage to another and the, the, the chimp has no notion whatever of what is being discussed there and more than we like now we're in positions of, of being in particularly in, the, in that um, in, in that position. There's also one, another dimension which um, the anthropologist and the psychoanalyst is particularly sensitive to, we have an overblown uh, view of our own intelligence. We think it's much more complicated than actually it is. Um, we, we see machines now just using words. They have the words and they just know uh, in what way you can put them in, them in an order that makes sense and they do that and they do it in a way that we think it's intelligent by definition. It's not it's just because the, the, the language is a depository of so much knowledge that if you put the, order, the, the words in the right order, you already have something which is quite, quite impressive. And um, because we don't have much time, just one final thing. Um, we have a tendency to think that the world we live in is, is better organized than, than it is. And uh, we use the words in uh, what is called now political correctness, which we try to bend the words uh, in order to trying to bend the world as we don't like the way it is. Uh, and that's very, very difficult to do. Uh, it's not the best approach. Uh, it was called new speak in, in Orwell in 1984. Uh, you, you can't, and Confucius said the same. Uh, at some point you need to get the, the words and the thing that they refer 
her to they get to get them back together. Let the prince be a prince again. Let the head of the family be a head of the family again. And that's something we have very a lot of difficulty. We see it, and in the cases we have to deal with, uh, that people's own prejudice uh, they confuse with the old order of, of, of the world, and that uh, we can't cannot bend it. If we want to change the world politically, economically, we have to do it. It's just not by massaging the, wor the words or refusing to see what they say or refusing what the artificial intelligence is discovering. That's not the way we're going to move ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, Julia, would you go next? And can I just uh, uh, yeah, ask the speakers just to introduce themselves quickly in the beginning? Thank you. Yeah, sure.